I started the Fall Color Tour 17 years ago and Suzanne and I have always had a love of the North Shore. And uh, what we really like about the North Shore is it's so unique than the rest of Minnesota. We've got the Sawtooth Mountains, which are totally different, you know, with elevations of 1,400 feet above the lake. So it's really, really pretty. You've got the fall colors. You've got the water, Lake Superior, the largest freshwater lake in the world. It's really great. And so I wanted to share that with the Nordstern members. And I put together our first fall color tour. I think we had about 17 people on the tour. And it was about 17 years ago. Most people think of the North Shore as Duluth, uh, but really the North Shore for me doesn't start until after Two Harbors, which is about 25 miles north of Duluth. The Bluefin is 89 miles north of Duluth. It's about an hour and a half drive, but on the way there's a lot of really neat places to stop. You can take the old Highway 61 and stop at the Knife River and the smoked fish houses, and then you can come up and uh, do the uh, Tetaguch State Park, which used to be called Baptism State Park, but they changed it uh, about 15 years ago to Tetaguch. You also have the Gooseberry Falls, which is a little closer. In between Duluth and Bluefin, there's two great places to look at the lighthouses. The one that I've usually stopped at is Split Rock, and I haven't been there for a number of years, but it's, it's been recently redone and it's beautiful. The lighthouse is really a blast from the past. They don't really use them like they used to. Uh, they're quite quite unique though and it's a very uh, it's like the Fort Snelling you get an interpreter who tells you how life was in the lighthouse back at the turn of the century the other great place is the Palisade Heads uh, Park and that's a really beautiful cliff that looks out to the lake and it's a great place to drive in and take a look all these state parks are beautiful examples of great rivers to look at and walk and hike so we have them come up and try and be here in time to have a gathering Friday night at 7.30, which allows each of the members to get to know each other a little bit better, because we have a variety of people. And then uh, Saturday, after the party, Friday night, Saturday morning, we meet at the Coho Cafe at nine o'clock. And I do the Coho Cafe because I really like eating there. All the breads are scratch, the pastries are scratch, and Rita Welshens is our baker, and she uh, runs sled dogs during the day, and she bakes all the bread products for the next day at night. And so she's here at three in the morning getting all the bakery products made for all the consumers here at Bluefin to enjoy all day. But it gives everybody a chance to enjoy the morning, get a little sustenance and meet up and talk and plan the day so they can go out. And I usually take them down to the Temperance River and the Temperance River is really a unique river. It's called the Temperance River because most rivers have a sandbar at the base. But the Temperance River, because of the steep rocks and the flow rate, flows so hard that no bar ever has a chance to settle. Hence, they called it the Temperance River because it had no bar. In other words, you couldn't get a drink at the distal tip of the Temperance River. So it was a really, really fun uh, place to go. A lot of igneous rock to look at and climb and check it out. And the other reason we do the Temperance River is to allow the people who may have partied too hardy Friday night a chance to catch up to the group so we don't lose anybody. And then we have five places we go. Uh, on the trip for the afternoon. Uh, we go up to Canada to Weemit Canyon, which is a huge gorge, it's 500 feet deep. We'll go up to Grand Marais and eat at the Birch Terrace, which is awesome. Incidentally, the, the restaurant on the Weemit Canyon trip is Karen's Country Corner. She makes everything from the dinner rolls to the everything you eat. It's all fresh, local ingredients. It's really quite good. And then uh, we do an Ely trip, which includes the Sudan Mine and then we do the Gunflint Trail, which is actually my favorite, and I would do that every year. The 45 miles of undulating hills and valleys and curvy roads, and each time you come around a corner, you might see a moose, or you might see a deer, or yesterday we saw a very healthy, mature fox with a rough grouse in its mouth, and he looked at us like, uh, yeah, this is my lunch, just leave me alone, and he was really happy to see us. And it's up and down and around, and it's, it's a nice 45-minute drive, and we, we have lunch at the Gunflint Lodge. And they usually have a lunch for between 60 and 70 of us. It's a, usually a buffet with some awesome soups. This year we had uh, fish chowder. And it wasn't just any fish, it was walleye. Walleye fish chowder with chunks of corn and then a chorizo sausage uh, soup. Very thick, very tasty and the two cobblers that they served were blueberry and a raspberry uh, something. I didn't have that, but it was really, everybody else was raving about it. It's a beautiful old lodge, 
and the people that are there are real can-do people. Uh, Sarah just really took great care of us this year at the Gunflint. Keith Jones does an absolutely great job on making sure we get all the gifts, which is just awesome. He hands out, he gets all the stuff donated from people. And uh, uh, the Bluefin itself, Dennis Rizdahl is a developer and he's been really great in terms of providing gift certificates for our members that stay here. He uh, supports us and we have a really good time. And once you get to the Gunflint, we do the lunch, you have the great drive up, but then I usually try to uh, have people burn off some calories. And this year we did the extra special hike, it's the High Cliffs hike. You get 200 feet above the lake and you stand out on a, like, it looks like a tongue almost of granite. And it's 150, 200 feet straight down. And most people are quite nerved by standing there. After we do the hikes, people usually try to have dinner at the Bluefin Grill on Saturday night, which is always very good food. Um, last night's dinner was phenomenal. We had eight people, it was great. And then Sunday morning, I try to lead a sunrise hike. And the sunrise hike is really my special gift to the club. It takes a lot of effort. You have to get up at five o'clock and meet at 5.30 in the morning at the Co Cafe. And you have to walk approximately 1.5 miles up an eight degree grade to see the sunrise. But you're 14, 30 feet above the lake and you get to look out at the sun coming up and it is spectacular. The Nordstern Fall Color Tour is really all about the people. The cars are just a vehicle to get us up here and everybody likes driving their nice Porsches and we love seeing them and it's really quite magnificent when 40 Porsches roll into Grand Marais and park at the lot at the Coast Guard and as we're driving in single file up to the Gunflint Lodge it's quite a scene to see all the cars in a row driving on the Gunflint Trail. What the Nordstern Fall Color Tour really is to me is an opportunity to bond with all the people and nature and that they can see what Minnesota really has to offer here up on the North Shore.